Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So Nick Pro recently sent me a package of their 32 colors acrylic paint kit. And they had asked me if I wanted to try it. And you know, they noticed that I did a lot of painting on my channel with the resin. So asked me if I was interested in trying their acrylic paints and of, I definitely am. I'm always looking for more colors, better colors, better paint than what I have. So I thought I'd give it a shot. Now, this box is huge. There are so many great colors in here. They give you a painting sponge. They give you a palette knife. They give you three different size paint brushes that are like super soft. Like it's a nice kit. It really truly is. All those great colors that you need, like flesh color, you know, just all kinds of stuff. Like it, it truly is a really, really nice kit with just about every color that you could possibly need. And it's thick acrylic paint, which I like. I really don't like those watery acrylic paints that you can get, like that come in little two ounce bottles like this. I don't like them, not for what I do anyway. I want something nice and thick that I'm really going to get good coverage for painting on resin because if you've ever painted on resin, you know that it's a little bit more difficult and you have to apply more paint and to use watery colors, it, it just, it's, it doesn't work right. So you need that thick, that thick paint, that good coverage. So I, I'm really keen on trying them and we're going to try them out today and the project that I have going on, and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. So what we're gonna do today is, I found this really cute tray and this cute wooden cross, and I want to make a really, really pretty just serving tray or decorative tray with this. So first step is where the tray is already painted white. I want to paint the cross white as well. And the reason that I want to do this is I've noticed that, especially when I've been, when I've painted various wooden things, that it seems the paints kind of take better if you give it a coating of white paint first. So I am just going to use right now some Waverly chalk paint in white. Now it's a matte white so when I paint over it the next set of paint should stick really well to it and I shouldn't have any issues and also it's going to seal this wood from the resin so that I don't have to worry about a lot of air bubbles later on when I am going to put this into the resin. So that's what we're going to do right now just give it a quick coat around the edges all over the base let this dry. Also what I'm doing is and I kind of I should have thought about this beforehand, but it's fine. I just am taking some air dry clay and I'm going to put it into this hole just to fill it. Now you could use wood glue or not wood glue, like that wood putty stuff or whatever. I don't have any of it. Or if I do, if my husband does, I don't know where we keep it at. So I figured air dry clay will work. So I'm just going to shove it in there just to fill that hole up so I don't have to worry about it. And then as this dries, then we're going to move on to the tray. Now the tray is already white and I could leave it that color, but I kind of want to do a mauve and like this really pretty gray piece. All right. Now going in with this gray paint again, I, I didn't really think of this until I started painting. I, I don't need to do the bottom of this. Like, it's going to be covered in resin. So, right now, I'm just wasting paint. But we're going to go over the sides. We're going to go over the inside. Now, you're not going to see the bottom, so I'm not necessarily worried about great coverage going on. It's already covered as far as the wood, so I don't have to worry about the air bubbles from the wood. But I do need to worry about the inside of the tray and the outside and the top edges of the tray because that will all be seen. Now, initially my first thought was I kind of wanted to give it like a, a weathered look. So I kind of was just not haphazardly applying the gray paint to it, but 
I wasn't necessarily worried about there being streaks because I thought it kind of looked like wood grain. I ended up changing it in the end and just recoding it again in paint because I wasn't liking how some spots were different than other spots as far as the darkness of the paint and whatever. So I just covered the whole thing over again. Now, going in with the maroon and painting over it and then I just decided that I wanted a little bit darker so I added a little bit of that same gray that I painted the tray in into the this maroon color just to kind of bring it a little bit closer together as far as color goes. Then I had the idea of I want to incorporate gold into it as well so I'm just going to edge this cross with my deco color gold pen and I'm not going to stop there. I'm also going to edge out the entire like top part edging of this tray as well. I may go in later after I resin it and do a little bit more, but I'm not sure. Honestly, this probably should have been as far as the tray goes, maybe not the cross because like I like I said I am putting this in resin. It should have been probably something done towards the end, but it was you know, my brain said to do it, so I listened. Now, could I have gone in with some gold paint? Sure. I really like the way that you get this, this shine and the actual metallic look of these paint pens, which is why I'm going to use this as opposed to paint. Plus, when you use paint, you know how you get, you get brush strokes and stuff like that, so... Eh, I, I didn't want that. I, I really like the metallic look. All right, going in with the Nick Pro resin now. This is going to be our first layer. I'm not putting the cross in here. All I want is to color the base layer of this tray. And I decided that going with the gold and the kind of creamy white look that I want to go with, I'm going to use a combination of HTV Ront's White Mica powder and some of this litter B. It's a cream. It, it says it's a cream color mica, but really it's just a gold interference powder. So I'm going to combine the two, mix it up, and I'm going to put this on the bottom. Now, this tray is big and I did not realize just how much resin this thing is going to take. Like, I, I figure, you know, I'm doing just a thin layer just to kind of give it that base coat and then I'll go in again with something else later on and whatever. But, oh my God, like I made up eight ounces of resin for this first one and I thought for sure I was going to have resin left over. But no, like it was barely enough. And honestly, it probably could have used a little bit more, but I have to keep in mind that I can't have the resin going up over where the little like where your fingers will go on the sides of the tray it can't go over that so I'm I'm limited in how much space but yeah it's a lot of resin that this thing takes like a lot <laughs> so yeah we're just going in here right now with this I, I'm being very careful not to get it on the sides like that's not what I want to have happen so I'm gonna hit it with my heat gun I want to kind of just pop any bubbles that are there for me mixing it and thin it out just a little bit. I found some unmixed mica that I had just mixed up and thin it out so that it moves a little bit easier because it is pretty cold in my house. So my resin's a little bit thicker than normal. And then we're just going to kind of scooch it off to the sides to fill in all those parts and make sure that it touches every single edge of this piece and then we're going to hit it again with the heat gun just to make sure there's no bubbles in this and then let this set for 24 hours to cure and then we're going to come back and we're going to do the next part now the next part so what happened was i went to record and i don't know what happened i don't know i don't know I don't know, but, um, I recorded all of the wrong stuff. So instead of me recording me pouring the resin and whatever, I ended up just re recording me mixing the resin and me 
um, cleaning up. So this is what we have. I, I, I'm going to go back and tell you what I did in a second. This is what we got 24 hours later. I printed out some stuff on my Cricut that I am going to put onto this. And then I'm going to go back and tell you what I did to get the color effects and all that good stuff that I didn't record. So in the, in the interest of, you know, me being me and doing things difficult and wrong on this project, I continued right here at, with the uh, transfer tape and I used the strong transfer tape along with this Cricut vinyl and I'm going to tell you, I don't like the actual Cricut brand vinyl at all. Like, it didn't want to stick to what it was supposed to stick to, and it wanted to stick to everything it wasn't supposed to stick to, so I fought with it the entire time. I cut out a lot just because it, it's, it, it's a lot, like, that I'm putting on here, and you guys can kind of get the picture of it. But to go back to what I did in this second layer, I took some, I, this time, instead of just doing eight ounces, I did 12 ounces. I did four ounces of clear. I did eight ounces of the white mica powder, and I added in some rose gold alcohol ink to kind of color it up a little bit. When I poured it, I poured it like if you're going to pour it to get striations and stuff like that. I poured my white mica or my white resin in, and then I poured the clear on top of it, and then I decided that I was just going to take the alcohol drops, and I was going to just kind of drop it into this as well, so there's going to be more concentrated areas of the rose gold alcohol inks that I used, and you can see I put the freaking words on crooked because it wanted to stick when I didn't want it to. Anyway, so I just let that cure. I stuck the cross in the middle and kind of just let it do its thing, and that's pretty much it. Now, back to the vinyl. Again, not digging this Cricut vinyl whatsoever. I honestly much prefer the other brands that I've used, but not liking this one. But I am really liking how this is looking. Like, it looks really, really, really good. And at this point, I was going to be done. Like, I had planned on, this is it, I'm done. I'm going to clean it off from any fingerprint. So I just got a microfi microfiber cloth and just wiping it off. And then I remember that I have some washi tape stickers. And I thought that these would look really, really, really pretty on there too. Just a couple, just to kind of give it that little extra something, something. And so I'm going to cut these out and we're going to put them on. And then we're going to pour this resin that I've got sitting here just kind of chilling waiting for me to, you know, stop making things up as I go along. So I do have one of those little, I don't even know what they're called. It's kind of like a rotary knife type deal that you're supposed to be able to kind of edge out your stickers in. And I, I try to use it. I don't know. I got to practice with it some more because it wasn't happening. So scissors is the way to go. Now I kind of want it to look like it's coming out of the edges of the tray. So I'm just going to line this up straight give it a little cut with my X-Acto knife, and then we're gonna stick these on. Same thing with the one on top. Now it is kind of going over that Y, but it's fine. You can still clearly read it. You know what it says. The This one here I damaged a little bit, so we're gonna hide that up in the corner and then put this other sticker on top. And I think it added so, so much to this tray. Like it is absolutely gorgeous. Okay to the resin. I mixed up eight more ounces of resin and I am just kind of letting it set here and then we're going to pour this in. Now I've got to be careful. Again, I'm getting really, really, really close to the top of where your fingers go for these handles. So it's not going to cover the wood at all. It's just going to go right along the edges of it, but I need to seal in all this vinyl and these stickers that I put in to make sure that it's not going anywhere especially since it didn't want to stick to begin with. And then I'm just going to hit it with my heat gun after I spread it out to the, all the edges, and then we're done. This thing just needs to set and cure, and it is completely done. That's a wrap on this one, guys. I will have the glamour shots done here at the end. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I will catch you on Tuesday for the next one. Love ya. Bye.